Today we need to go from this to this. To do that, I'm going to go over the Unity input system and also how to connect that with our hands and hand animations. There is a ton of good stuff to cover, so let's get started. Kicking off from the last video, you'll see the project hasn't changed at all, but I did want to point out one thing. So I added this input action manager. It turns out Unity actually now automatically adds that component to the XR origin. So that is already here. And for organization purposes, I still like mine being detached in, in its own little object. I'm just going to remove that, but that's personal preference. If you decide not to do that, just make sure it's using the XRI default input actions and you can get rid of this one. It's really up to you how you like to organize your project. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now for this project, I'm actually going to be using Oculus hands that they have provided and I've added some things to it. I've added some animations and a few other folders. So if you go down in the description below, you'll be able to download the Unity package and then import it into the project. Now, once you've downloaded the Unity package, it's as easy as dragging and dropping it into our assets folder. So I have it right here. I'm just going to drag it into assets and then it will show me the list of things I'm importing. And I'm just going to click import and I'm going to go over what we have. So expanding this out, you'll see I have two folders. I have one that says Oculus hands and then I also have a practice folder. And in Oculus hands, I have an animations folder that has our controllers, our animation controller. We have animation clips, which I'll cover in a moment. We have a material for our hands just so they don't look janky. I have models for the hands and then we have prefabs which if we click on that you'll see all it has attached is an animator and we'll be adding a few additional things. For the practice folder all I have in here are just two prefabs that have nothing on them and the point is well you're supposed to reproduce the hand models that we're creating here for well practice and you know what these aren't zeroed out I'm gonna zero those out too just for more practice so you can get a little experience of kind of rotating and positioning where your hands should be, they spawn in. Hey, and speaking of spawning in, let's start spawning our hands. So starting off, I'm going to get rid of these spheres because I just don't want spheres for hands anymore. And to spawn these, the fun thing is that the XR controller actually has a script in it or has a function in it that will spawn our hands. We just have to put a model prefab right into here. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to grab the left hand for the left hand and then the right hand for the right hand. Now, when I start up the program, you'll see that my hands are spawning and yeah, pretty cool. The only problem is our hands aren't animating when I push buttons like you would kind of expect with a VR experience. So let's fix that. Now, in order to get our hands to animate using our controllers, we're going to need four things. We're going to need an animation controller, an animator, animation clips, and a script to tie it all together. Now, if we select our left or right hand prefab, you'll see that it already has an animator attached, so job one done. Also has a controller that it uses, which controller is already set here, and then also an avatar. And the, the avatar is just a skeletal structure that the animator uses to bend the model. That's really it for the animator. Next, I want to go over the animation controller and then just do a quick brief overview of what the one I've created, and then we're gonna create one from scratch. If we come over to the animations folder, and you can see I have a left hand animation controller and a right hand animation controller. I'm just going to double click this and we will be greeted with the animator window. From here, we use a blend tree to use our or make our animations happen. So you have to think we're not going to be fully gripping our button. We don't want it to just automatically go to a fist or a pinch motion. You want it to kind of slowly transition to these things because our hands don't automatically snap into position. So if we double click the blend tree, you can see here that is what we have constructed. This blend tree has three animation clips that it's using, the default hand position where we're not hitting any buttons, we have a pinch where we're holding down the trigger button, and then two fists when we're holding the grip or holding the grip and the trigger button are pressed. So if we come over here, you'll see that I am using a 2D freeform Cartesian, and then we have these animation clips here. So you can see here or imagine this is nothing being pressed, this is the trigger being pressed, this is the grip being pressed, and then both the grip and the trigger. Last thing I'm going to point out here is the parameters. We also have two parameters we've added, which are both the grip and trigger. And you can see these parameters are being used over here by this 2D freeform Cartesian. So if I were to create this from scratch, all I'd have to do is right click this, go here, and let us find animation controller. Sure, I'm just going to name this practice. 
And you'll see it's opened this up. And I'm going to right click create state from new blend tree. So now we have our blend tree. If I double click here, you'll see it's not connected to anything. Also, if I come over here on the parameters, we don't have any parameters except one called blend. First, I'm gonna add two floats, grip and trigger. So how are we going to get our animation clips in here? Well, I need to come up here, change the blend type to 2D Freeform Cartesian, and then you'll see the parameters is still using that blend parameter. So I'm gonna change this to grip and trigger. And since I don't need that blend parameter, I think I'm just gonna delete it. And now we need to add some parameters. So just hit this, add motion field, and we're gonna do that four times. Now we need to set up what our parameters or states are. So this is no grip or no trigger. So zero, zero is right. This I'm gonna have be the trigger is held. So I'm gonna put a one here. This is gonna be representative of the grip being held. And then this is going to be the grip and the trigger being held. Last thing we need to do is add in our animation clips. Now, luckily we already have our animation clips here. If I double click, it will pop up the animation window and you'll see all it does is it has different positions positions and forms for our hands. And I did cover this in the last time I made this video, but you know what, I'll be honest, uh, a lot of people dropped off when I started covering it. So I just added in the clips here. I assume you guys either know how to do this, or if you want, I would be more than happy to do a separate video. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want that video and I'll show you how to animate these little hand models. Coming back and selecting our blend tree, I'm just gonna make this for the left hand again, why not? So I'm gonna put the default here. I'm going to put the fist in these last two slots because this is where the grip trigger is being held. And then the pinch, this is the only time the trigger is being held without the grip. And there you go. We have created our animation controller for this. Yeah, with that, we have gone over the animation controller, the animator, and also our animation clips. Last thing we need to do is get the script to tie it all together. But before we can do that, we really have to understand the Unity input action system. So back in 2018, Unity introduced the action input system. And what this allows us to do is map out multiple input devices or keys to a singular action. Action. So this kind of eliminates the need to write code for very specific controllers on all the different VR devices that are available. So it's incredibly helpful. The question is, how do we use the action input system to get our grip and trigger values? Well, yeah, let's look at it. The input system or the action map that we are using comes from the XR Interaction Toolkit, if you remember. And let's see here. If we go to XRI Default Input Actions, double click it, this is going to be our action map. And you can see there's a bunch of different ones for the head, the left hand, left hand interaction, left hand locomotion. And so we'll cover some of these in later videos, but right now the one we're primarily interested in is the interactions. So if we come to left hand interaction, you can see we have a few things that we can do here. And so our grip is given with select. If we expand this out, you can see that the trigger is given by activate. But each one, we have a select and a select value. So what's the difference here? And if you look over here, you can see action type. And this is an action type of button. There's a few different ones here. And button just means it is either on or off. You either pressed it or you didn't. And then select value is going to say, well, it's gonna be a range between zero and one. So how pressed is the button? Since we are animating hands and using blend trees, we don't want it just to go to zero and one. We want it somewhere in between because we're transitioning between these phases. So when it comes to the script, what we need is the select value and the activate value. And again, this is going to be the grip value and this is going to be the trigger value. So let's get to scripting. Exiting out of this and going over, uh, you know what, let's see, who should I add it on? Oh, prefab. I'm going to go to my left hand prefab and I'm going to add a script called uh, animate hand controller. Why not? There we go. And you'll see I have some references here. Look, I've already made this script. For those of you who like a little more convenience and just want this script given to you, I have the source code on my Patreon. Boop, 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 boop. But enough about me. Let's get into the script. Opening up this script, let's look at what we have. So obviously we're using the Unity engine, but we're also using input system. I also did a require component of type animator. That just makes sure when we're adding the script that we have an animator attached to the game object. And then we also have two input action references. And these are going to be references to, well, our input actions from before, like I mentioned. This is going to have the grip and the trigger. We also have a reference to our animator. And then we're going to 
gonna have two floats which are gonna store our grip in trigger values. Down here in the start, of course, we go and we grab that hand animator. And then in update, which updates every single frame, it is going to animate the grip and the trigger, which if we look at those values, pretty simple here. We just go into the action and we read the float value and store it. And then we take the hand animator and we set the float for the grip parameter to the grip value. And so if we came back to the editor and looked at our controllers, our animation controllers, that is, which is under Oculus Hands Animations, and let's just double click one. You can see, yeah, it's just setting these parameters, the grip and the trigger. But before we boot up the scene, let's make sure we wire in the last few things that we need. So for the left hand, we need to get this grip reference. And I am going to say left hand. And then what do we need? If We need the select. So actually, it might be easier to look for select. Yeah, the left hand select value is what we're after for grip. And then we need the activate value for the trigger. And there we go. So this is going to be for the trigger. That's going to be for the grip. And then we just need to add this to our right hand. And again, just add the right references. So yeah, obviously, this is going to be for the right hand select and the left hand select. Make sure you don't mix that up. Otherwise, it's going to get very confusing when you test this out. There we go. And let's boot up the scene and see what we have. With that, our hands are spawning. And when I grab the grip, it makes a fist. And when I grab the trigger, it seems to make a pinch. Well, I hope you found this useful. And as always to my Patreon members, thank you for keeping this channel alive. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.